because one of the big promises Jesus made was he was going to come back and rule over the messianic. See, they were all saying, you're the Christ. Now, Christ to us is just a sound, a word, Christ. Actually, that word is Mashiach, Messiah. Christos means the anointed Messiah, the promised one. Jesus said, I'm the promised one, and they all knew what the promise was that he was going to reign as Messiah over this kingdom that was going to overspread the whole earth. And so, look at verse 28. And Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, in the regeneration. What's the regeneration? Well, that's a complicated word. It's only two times in the New Testament. It talks about the regeneration that we have by the Spirit of God, the washing of regeneration, you know, that concept of salvation. The other meaning for it is right here. It's not when we get saved. It's when God regenerates the kingdoms of this world. That he st Actually, regeneration uh, is made up of two words. Genesis, we get Genesis from it, beginning, and pollen, which means again. So it's again a Genesis. It's again a beginning, again a new start. When God restarts humanity, what is that? That's when he comes to rule. He tells us about it. I don't have time to read every verse, but he said, I'm going to separate the sheep from the goats. I'm going to send the goats out, and the sheep are going to come into my kingdom, and they're going to populate this kingdom. But it's not in heaven. It's on earth. One-fifth of the Bible describes it as right here on earth, and that Jesus is going to actually be ruling out of Jerusalem over the whole earth, and there's going to be no rebels. Satan's going to be and his demons are going to be in captivity, and there's going to be no poisonous animals, no, no carnivorous animals, no poisonous insects. I mean, the United Nations believes it. They have it in, if you go to New York City today and look at the UN building, it says the lion will lay down by the lamb. Wow, they believe that much of the Bible, at least, and it says, and they'll beat their swords into plowshares. That's right out of Isaiah, talking about the millennium, the messianic earthly rule of Christ. So look what he says. In that regeneration, when I do everything I promised as a Messiah... The Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, and you who have followed me will also sit, now it's getting a big promise, on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. You know, there was a whole movement, uh, uh, what was his name, Herbert W. Armstrong, British Israelitism. He talks about the 12 tribes and their loss. The tribes are certainly not lost to God. He knows right where they are. And they are going to be on earth, and they're going to be ruled over by the 12 apostles, who are also the 12 foundation stones of heaven. And the 12 tribes are the 12 gates into heaven. So the, the, the future plans God has included these disciples. And so Jesus gave them this big promise. So in Matthew 26, Jesus ended communion with the words, my Father's kingdom. In Matthew 19, 28, he talks about his Father's kingdom. It's going to be them literally sitting in seats of authority helping him do something on earth. That one-fifth of the Bible, one out of every five verses, talks about this. I mean, if you take the kingdom stuff out of the Bible, it'll fall apart because it's so much. It's everywhere. It just fills from cover to cover. So, what exactly would Jesus Christ's disciples have understood that kingdom of the Father to be? Well, the answer to that is Jesus had already explained that kingdom. Now, yeah, let me do a little visual. Matthew 26 is here. Matthew 19 is here. What's just before Matthew 26? Just before the Lord's Supper is Matthew 25 and Matthew 24. In fact, let's turn there. I want to show you what just before the Lord's Supper, what Jesus had told them was going to be the, the inauguration of his coming to rule his Father's kingdom. Jesus Christ is coming back. He is coming back, the second coming, not his coming for the church that Revelation talks about where he takes us out of this world so he can begin doing all this stuff with Israel. He's not referring to that coming. He's referring to his coming where every eye will see him in the clouds and everybody will mourn and wail and hide and try and burrow into the ground and where all the earth will be just terrified of his coming. That's the second coming. Jesus said, I'm coming back for you, and I'm going to bring blessings, and I'm going to come and take you to my Father's house, and I'm going to, you're going to dwell with me. Those two are very distinctly different in the Bible. This one, look at chapter 24, is 
the, the explanation of the coming kingdom. Written down for us in Matthew 24 and 25 was what Jesus Christ said and taught, and we can trace exactly what the disciples would have thought his Father's kingdom was because he tells them. He tells them what's going to be his coming back and what he's going to do. And so basically we could say Matthew 24 and 25 are Jesus preceding the Lord's Supper with a summary of the future. Jesus precedes that supper telling all this prophetic stuff that we're going to look at. And then at the supper he says, now I already taught you what's going to happen, but until that happens, I'm not going to drink this cup new with you until my Father's kingdom comes to earth.